poor age used to be responsible for such travesties such as this and like this. But the year is 2024, meaning if you slap a 10K badge onto a new driver of yours, you're automatically entered into every struggling golfer's wish list at Christmas. However, the almighty badge of 10K comes with drawbacks. No matter if you're the $399 option or the $699 one. So what are the drawbacks? Which one of these rewards a poor swing more? And ultimately, can we decipher what forgiveness is and work out why we keep being sold it? Now, for some of you watching the channel, you'll know that I don't review brand new equipment. Instead, I wait a couple of years for the driver to drop to a third of what its original retail price was, and then go, yeah, that's all right, that. However, the new Tour Edge driver piqued my interest in a few different ways. Number one, $399, which isn't obviously cheap, but considerably less than the other 10K options. Number two, and selfishly, Tour Edge doesn't do that well in the second hand market. So I want to see if this is one thing to look out for, especially in a couple of years time. Now, big thanks to the guys at Replay Golf for obviously supplying this G430 10K driver. And full disclosure, Tour Edge sent me this driver FOC, which is important for me to say, as it will refrain me from gushing over this driver, due to the possibility you guys think my integrity could be bought with a mere 3D diamond face, 360 degree ridge back, internal ribbing, fine tuning, 10K MOI design driver. Well, it can't. That being said, let's do some testing because like every other YouTuber, of course, we're gonna be willing for the cheaper option to do really well. The first thing that caught my eye with this driver is that slight kink of offset down here by the hosel. And when I read through the stats that Tour Edge sent against its competitive driver, one of the things that did stand out was the ball speed and the increase in carry distance from hill shots. Now through those data findings, it was marginal at best, but with that slight offset kink, it kind of tells me who this driver is marketed especially for. But as we go through the findings, it's not to say this thing here doesn't pack a punch. A drastic thing that I found is how big the face is on the Tour Edge. I mean, that is big compared to the very trademark typical ping stretched out flattened pancake design that they've had for an incredibly long time. And because of that deepness that the 725 obviously uses on the face, it almost looks dwarfed from a bird's eye view with the Ping G430. But here comes our first installment of personal preference. Some of you would stand over that and think frying pan, and then the rest of you would be thinking, Jesus, just give me the biggest face I can find for that first tee shot in the morning. Because I've hit 15 shots alternating with both drivers and there's some pretty eye-opening data that you guys really need to know. However, I wanna hit a few shots now and talk about forgiveness. Which one of these are gonna be more forgiving for you? And ultimately, does David compete with Goliath? Over the last two decades, we have heard nothing but distance carry ball speed and rightly so as the years have gone on the public perception is well they can't get any better in those areas that will be absolutely fascinating for a lot of you watching towards the end of this video and that's why 10k forgiveness to me is absolutely genius as it's incredibly difficult to justify or even measure now, by no means am I saying either of these drivers aren't forgiving. Actually, I'd go out on a limb and say, these are the most forgiving drivers in our market to date. My point is, I don't think a lot of golfers actually understand what forgiveness actually is. And I understand the confusion because the whole thing about 10K is that if you hit the ball at the toe and the heel, the face doesn't open or close as much, meaning somewhat tighter dispersion and more ball speed. 
The biggest issue is most of us have too open of a club face or too close of a club face even before the point of impact. And considering all we want in this game is straight fairway finders, therefore let's talk about the three things that make a straight shot and guess which one's at dead last. At number one, we have club face at the point of impact. And no matter your swing path or your strike into the ball, if that face is pointing right, she's gonna go right. In at number two, we have path. So if my face is pointing at the target, yet I come very much across it, obviously it starts somewhat that direction, but then curves off to the right. And in at last place, as long as my face and my path is pretty decent, we have sentinels as strike. And of course, I don't want to hit the toe of my driver, but on the golf course, let's be honest, none of us would really care how much more or less ball speed we actually got from that strike as long as we find our ball. You can kind of see it at the bottom left there. That's an unusual little spot for me. My point is there's no miracle cure for a straight flight, apart from obviously the raw fundamentals. And if I was humanly able to hit that exact same swing with the SLDR with either of these drives, I'm sure I would have fractionally got something more out of it. The biggest reason I chose to do this review in the first place is to actually stop certain golfers buying a brand new forgiving driver because they're looking to cure their massively over the top swing or massively cupped wrist on the way down. And sadly, even a 15K driver wouldn't be able to help those kind of golfers. Here's what you need to know when it comes to the data and the downside of 10K drivers in general. Forgiveness is the perfect marketing strategy as there's so many factors that play into efficiency, shaft, head type, loft, ball, etc. Even though both of these shafts are stiff and 60 gram, it was obvious from the start the Tor Edge was creating a higher launch angle at impact with my swing and my speed. Now this isn't a bad thing as a lot of people looking at this driver will want the added launch that the 10K drivers in general provide. But at my speed, the shaft and head combination of the Tor Edge created too high of a dynamic loft, meaning more backspin and less efficiency. And dynamic loft plays a huge part in efficiency for the same reason your wedge can't produce more ball speed than your driver. However, we're going to fix this in a minute and show you how the ball couldn't care less what technology you're using. But first, I want to explain why I might want to take the Tor Edge onto the course and not the Ping G430 10K in their current states. Firstly, sound, feel and forgiveness between these two are very close. I would put a tick in the box towards the Ping as I don't like looking down at offset heads, especially with the occasional hook in my locker on the course. However, if we're talking numbers, and straighter drives in terms of left to right dispersion the Tor Edge 1 not because it's more forgiving but as discussed earlier in its current setup it's creating more backspin reducing left and right curvature. Because the ping in its current setup seems to produce a lower dynamic loft and therefore putting its spin range closer to my typical goal of 2,500, I saw a tighter front to back dispersion, e.g. more distance, but then I obviously traded left to right dispersion. Welcome to Club Fitting 101, you can't have both. But please be aware, this is the downside of the 10K driver range from any manufacturer, as these heads are at the very end of the high launch and high spin spectrum. Yes, we can manipulate that dynamic loft with shaft and loft combinations, but there's a reason only a handful of tour pros have 10K drivers in the bag, and it's because other head types are more prone to reducing launch and spin and ironically, those drivers are still going to be around the 9,000 MOI mark anyway. However, if you're struggling to increase your launch and potentially want more spin to help reduce your left to right dispersion at the potential expense of more distance, then these heads can be worth considering. But to prove my point further and how ballistics makes such a huge difference in our game and not technology, I lofted the Tor Edge down to nine degrees. After two ropey hits and further cementing how important backspin is to left to right dispersion, my third hit with the newly lofted down Tor Edge driver went further than, than all the other 30 hits in the session 
and with a one mile an hour club head speed disadvantage to boot. Here's the good and bad news. Tour Edge has a lot of shafts, lots for you to choose from at a pretty competitive price. And as far as I can tell, it's as forgiving as the ping. Bad news is if you're in the UK and I imagine some parts of the US, getting a Tour Edge fitting will be difficult compared to the ping where let's be honest, it's every pro shop and golf outlets default manufacturer. But I still stand by my motto, even though this is somewhat cheaper, never buy a brand new driver off the shelf. Guys, if you've got any questions on your golf bag or golf game, sasgolfacademy.com. Catch you guys later.